today's webinar is developing advanced digital dental materials demanded by dental professionals. Ira Rosenau, president of Keystone Industries, will discuss how you can improve your lab's efficiency and accuracy with digital workflows and advanced materials such as T-Mill, high-impact denture-based disc, and T-Print, precision, precision 3D resins by Keystone Industries. If you have any questions, please type them into the question box and Ira will address them at the end of the webinar. But now I'm gonna turn it over to Ira. Thank you very much, uh, much appreciated. Uh, good afternoon, everybody on the East Coast. Good morning to those of you joining on the West Coast. Um, very much appreciate your time and, uh, and attention today. Uh, my name is Ira Rosenau. I'm the president at Keystone Industries here in uh, New Jersey. Um, today, we're gonna talk a little bit about our development of our line of digital uh, dental materials, uh, CAD CAM denture, uh, materials as well as our line of 3D printing uh, resins. Um, I will start to go through a little bit about the uh, key mill denture puck and then I'll transition into um, a discussion about the key print resins. As we mentioned, I'm happy to take discussions at the uh, at the end questions. Uh, it's always a lot more fun to be interactive through these and um, so we'll get started. Um, as I mentioned, um, we're going to start with uh, the key mill puck which is a high impact denture disc, uh, it's high impact acrylic, uh, stronger than PMMA. Um, so we're gonna take a look at how we developed the material, what some of its performance attributes are and some of the benefits to the, uh, to the end users. Um, before I start, I think it's probably important to just give you a little bit of a background about the company and who we are and how we've uh, gotten here. Uh, Keystone is a uh, global dental manufacturer we have three uh, manufacturing sites in Pennsylvania and New Jersey that are ISO 13485 for medical device. Uh, we also are a OTC drug manufacturer here in New Jersey. Um, we have dedicated sales personnel in um, Canada, throughout the United States, Latin America. We have a dedicated um, warehouse and sales team in Southern Germany in Singen. Um, we have warehousing in China and on the west coast of the United States. Um, so we are a global full service manufacturer. Uh, we have materials in stock. Our materials are all made here in the U.S. And we have service and support in the EU time zone so that we as a uh, manufacturer of these materials are able to service and support across the globe as needed. Um, so it's turning towards um, the key mill product. Uh, many of you may know uh, Diamond D, which is our high impact traditional denture acrylic. Uh, it's been on the market since 2003. It's one of the leading high impact denture acrylics uh, out there with GC and Dent Supplies is really kind of the most popular high impact uh, denture acrylics. Um, with the advent and advancement of digital dental technologies, we really started looking a couple of years ago about um, how to how to really take advantage of the strength and um, performance features of our Diamond D acrylic and to offer them in a uh, millable um, disc for uh, efficient digital denture production. Um, one of the nice things that we've really seen even in the last 18 months is um, design software capability in the denture space has improved dramatically uh, with 3Shape, ExoCAD, even guys like Blue Sky Bio coming out with denture modules. Um, as the software has improved, it has led to uh, a further adoption of digital denture production, both in terms of milling and 3D printing. So um, as we saw sort of the confluence of um, digital dentistry and the improvement of the denture software, uh, it was a really prime time for us to um, move forward with our advancement of a, of a CAD CAM millable denture disc. Um, so our material is fully cleared. Um, it is uh, cleared in Canada, the EU, it's CE mark, and it's uh, FDA 510K approved. Um, this is a just a general nice shot of one of our finished uh, milled dentures from the key mill denture base. You can see it's highly aesthetic. Uh, it's veined, uh, much like our Diamond D material is. Um, the material is very, very strong. Um, it is fracture resistant. It is... Um, really aesthetic. It does not need a lot of polishing um, or finishing as a final part. Uh, the material is 
compatible with uh, four axis and five axis mills uh, from VHF, Roland, IMAS, ICOR, and others. Uh, a little later in the presentation, I'll go through a more fulsome list for you to show some of the mills that it has been working well in. Um, the material, uh, because it is impact resistant and has such impact strength, um, some of the weaker mills or weaker burrs may not be the right fit for this material because um, the strength of the denture also gives a little pushback on some of the um, weaker mills. So some of the more powerful mills definitely work better with our material. Um, and we'll go through a list of some of those mills a little bit later. Um, product features. This is uh, really an important point um, for us to discuss because at the end of the day, uh, people such as yourselves really want to know what am I getting with a, with a product like the key mill? Why is it such an advancement over uh, the myriad of PMMA discs that are out there, or even a couple of the other high impact acrylics. And uh, so um, the material is very much formulated for high impact resistance. Um, we were looking for material back when we formulated Diamond D that would be really impact and resistance that people wouldn't um, break a denture if it drops on the ground or if it, it gets some sort of an untoward force. Um, the material and the puck are, are porosity free. Um, we do 100% QC on our pucks, and one of the things we'll do on all of our pucks is put them through an ultrasonic um, process of looking for porosity in the final denture. So every one of our discs that goes on the market has been 100% QC'd and ensured that it is porosity free. Uh, unlike PMMA discs, the material here is not brittle. Um, it will not chip, it will not fracture. Uh, I'm going to show you a really nice video demonstration of this in a slide or two. Um, it's really the highest, most important feature of this material. Um, with digital dentures, uh, you have improved accuracy um, over traditional methods. Um, the material is a pre-polymerized um, chunk of uh, plastic, so it's already gone through its, its shrinkage. You won't have to factor in shrinkage when, uh, as if you were doing a traditional flasking of, of dentures. Um, and similarly, because the process is standardized, um, we drive out most of the residual monomer. It's well within the safety standards for ISL. And because it's a pre-polymerized uh, product, um, the low residual monomer means the product is ensured to be safer for, for the patient. Uh, product also has low water absorption, meaning it won't take on too much water. It won't swell. It won't change its shape. It won't change its fit. Uh, the, the product that is bought will be the product that is worn and it should not um, suffer from any sort of swelling or water absorption. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's fracture resistant. We're gonna go over a little bit of data on that. And as you saw from a couple of the pictures, it's a really nice aesthetic denture. It's uh, got our, our uh, veined finish to it. Um, you will not need to wrestle with it for polishing uh, more than just an initial sort of buff and, and polish. Um, here you can see a couple um, samples of the finished product here. We've also got our discs. So you got a light reddish pink and, a, and an original pink, um, along with uh, a different view from, a, from the side and the top to see the aesthetics of how the denture finishes. Um, for those of you who really like physical properties, here are a couple of the key ones. Um, uh, Diamond D has a very high uh, ultimate flexural strength of, of greater than 90. Uh, the flexural modulus is just a hair shy of 2,500. And the notched uh, Izod impact test is 52, um, which is uh, very, very high. Uh, so what does this actually all mean? Well, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, so um, let's show you a little bit of our video here. Um, give me one sec, okay. I can tell you as we ran this test, the asphalt gave before the denture gave. We left little marks in the asphalt. Um, as you can see the final part, while it has some asphalt on the top from, uh, from the pressure, uh, it did not fracture, it did not break. Even the thinnest part of that denture, which is actually milled kind of thin there, um, no fractures, no micro fractures, no breaks. Um, I can talk all day about notched impact and flexural modulus, um, but frankly for uh, a lay person like me, uh, watching a car drive over a denture is uh, pretty good evidence of how it's going to hold up in terms of its fracture resistance. Um, here on the same slide, we've got a, um, some data here 
So the key mill um, joules per in, uh, meter of notched impact is just shy of 52. Uh, independent tests have been run on both the key mill and the, and the dense supply lucitone 199 material. And you can see that our material has 36.5% more impact resistance than uh, lucitone 199. It's fairly consistent with um, the testing over the years compared to um, dense supplies, traditional acrylic and the diamond D version as well. So uh, we think we've got a, a really interesting differentiated product here that um, leads to a much better product for the patient. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, selecting and bonding in teeth. And here I think it's important to um, emphasize a couple things. One, I'm not a CDT, I'm a business guy and a reformed lawyer. So um, do not be looking to me for the best um, technical advice on um, techniques. Um, here I can give you definitely some feedback on things that have worked well and that we've had some of our people out in the field, um, CDT is giving us in, um, information and feedback on. Um, in general, because the material is Diamond D, um, much like you would use in your normal workflow for, um, for um, teeth selection, uh, a little bit different for bonding than you would for a traditional flask process, but your selection of teeth would be similar. Um, generally, PMMA uh, binds better with acrylic uh, materials for dentures. Um, whether you're going to use tooth cards, an individual tooth, whether you're going to um, mill out um, three or four unit bridges to bond in, whether you're going to do something along the lines of uh, what we see Ivoclar recommend, which is a full arch um, mill of the teeth and bonding in a full arch. I think a lot of that depends on the individual techniques and preferences of uh, the folks in the lab. Um, what we've seen is regardless of which method you use, you should be able to get good results of bonding in the teeth without pop outs. Um, Multi-unit bridges tend to um, help a little bit with mechanical retention because each tooth on each side lends a little bit of additional support and retention to the other teeth. Uh, but if you were going to do individual tooth cards, you would have good success with those as well. Uh, there are a variety of uh, materials you could use to choose to do bonding. Um, we have a lot of people uh, successfully using our Diamond D self-cure acrylic to bond in the teeth. Um, we have people using cyanoacrylate glues of, of a variety of different types. Um, and there are also some commercial bonding products that are out there that work very well uh, as well, even though they're essentially some form of either a monomer polymer system or a cyanoacrylate glue. But products like Ivoclar's um, uh, ProBond and uh, Vita and American Dental Supply also have materials that are um, dedicated specifically for bonding in teeth to mill denture parts. So uh, any of these options will generally work well. Um, the selection of the teeth and the manner in which you choose to bond them in may have some impact on the ultimate result. So why key mill? That's a pretty, um, pretty standard question. Why would you wanna choose this over the other options or a change in your workflow? And there's, there's really a, a number of different reasons. Here on this slide, we're gonna talk about the quality proposition. On the next slide, I'm going to talk to you about the value proposition, which is um, both of which are important. I won't say one's more important than the other. They're, they both are very important to labs and to end users. So from a quality proposition standpoint, um, you've got digital precision here. Um, with traditional method methods of packing or injecting um, acrylic to make a denture, uh, you do introduce elements of human error that can come into play there, whether it's have you adequately packed the flask? Did you do your wax up correctly? Um, have you um, gone through your cure sufficiently so that you've reduced the residual monomer to a safe level? Um, have you deflasked the product correctly? Um, did you have too much shrink in the product when you were doing your traditional flasking? All of those issues go away with, um, with a key mill disc because a lot of those issues are already dealt with um, in terms of the product. So, You've got very highly accurate digital uh, manufacturing. Um, you've got, as I mentioned before, reduced risk of human error because you've got no shrinkage. It's already pre-polymerized. Um, you've already driven out all the residual monomer from the product that you're gonna drive out to get to a safe and effective le level. You have porosity-free uh, product that's been validated by 100% QC, including going through ultrasonics. Um, and you've got the efficiency of, of digital if you're denture breaks, or if you lose it, or if you misplace it at the hospital, and all these things can kind of happen with dentures, 
with a digitally fabricated denture, your patient doesn't have to go back and start the process of impression and try-ins and adjustments from square one. You can just go back and go boop, hit a button and reprint your denture or remill your denture, depending if it's a milled or a 3D printed product. So one of the real advantage of, of digital dentures is the ability to um, refabricate um, or replace a lost or damaged denture. Um, that is true with the Keymill product as well. You get an excellent aesthetic finished device with minimal polish required. And um, when it comes to comparing it to 3D printing, uh, each generation of 3D printing denture materials continue to improve. Uh, we're working on ours as well. And um, each generation gets a little bit better and a little bit better. Uh, but right now, the people who are doing a lot of milling, including, uh, I'm sorry, a lot of printing, including companies like ours who are heavily dedicated to 3D printing, um, we have to look in the mirror and acknowledge that the materials um, are um, still advancing. And right now, um, with the creation of a chemo disc that's made out of tried and true diamond D acrylic, and that's known to perform at a very high level, um, you're getting a really quality disc that you can rely on at that point. Um, the value proposition, that matters a lot too. Um, so let me give the little caveat at the outset here is that the, um, the numbers here that are used for time and preparation and active working time are sort of an average. Uh, any one lab tech or technician may be more, um, more advanced or have more efficient techniques than another. Here we try to use a fairly universal technique for setting up a traditional um, flasked um, denture and to compare that with um, a pretty standard um, setup um, design and milling of a, of a denture. And what you get um, at the end of the day is most importantly a very significant time savings in active working time for your lab personnel. Um, you're going to save almost three and a quarter, probably a little bit more than three and a quarter hours by choosing the milling route than you would by doing traditional artisan um, uh, denture manufacturing through a flask. Um, that's a very big savings. If you're paying your lab staff $25 an hour, you just saved somewhere between $75 and $100 on, on your denture cost. Um, the material cost is also an advantage when it comes to milling. Um, it's not as big a, of an advantage as the time aspect of this, but it's there. Um, such that when you compare milling to um, traditional ma uh, fabrication, um, there is a um, significant increase not only in the quality and the um, standardization of the product, but it's a better financial picture for the labs. They're just going to be able to make them more efficiently, make more of them with less remakes, less problems, um, and in a more efficient manner. So. Um, the, the quality and the money all make a lot of sense for, for the lab personnel. Uh, very briefly, here is a quickie list of some of the initial mills that we're working with. There are more than this on the list. Uh, if you have questions about a mill that you have in use and you want to know um, how compatible it is with this material, or if even you want to give it a test run, please let us know. We'd be very happy to discuss that with you. Um, but as you can see, um, some of the most popular mills that are out there have already been used successfully with, uh, with our product. Um, the Roland mill works very well. The, all of the IMS i products are terrific with, um, with this product. Uh, the Ivoclar Weiland mill is also doing well. Axis's mill, Degree of Freedom, which I know they just rebranded to iMilling. Um, we haven't changed the slide yet, so forgive me. It's Degree of Freedom is, is listed here. Uh, and VHF as well. Um, so we've had good success. Uh, milling times will vary a little bit depending on um, the strength of the mill, the design strategy that's been employed. Um, but some of these mills can do the work in, um, in an hour and a half. Some of them take, uh, you know, up to two and a half to three hours. All very efficient in the grand scheme of manufacturing dentures, uh, but a lot will depend on the burrs and the mills that are selected. Um, I'm going to show you a couple, uh, before I move on to the 3D printing resins, we're going to show a couple finished parts here uh, so you can get a sense of um, how aesthetic and really beautiful some of these dentures are. Here's one where we've done no characterization at all. Um, here's a denture where we've done some work on, on the denture for the aesthetics. Uh, because it's an acrylic, it should take, and we've tested it with a variety of different stains and acrylic pastes to sort of 
help with the aesthetic and the characterization of the denture if that's what you choose to do. Um, the material takes all those uh, those uh, artisan dyes and, and acrylics quite well. Uh, you're getting a top view here uh, of the of the denture and a final sort of really nice looking aesthetic front view. Um, so that's uh, that'll bring to a close sort of my presentation of the Keymill product. I know we'll have some questions at the end, um, but uh, since we're moving right along and I'm not taking questions halfway through, I'm going to pivot to our line of 3D printing materials, uh, key print. Um, so let me um, step back for just two seconds and give you a little bit of a story of how Keystone came to approach its 3D printing resin project, because I think it actually informs how the products have developed and sort of who and what we are. Um, Keystone Industries, as I mentioned at the beginning, is a global dental manufacturer. Um, as we started to really look at how digital dentistry was advancing quickly, probably about three and a half years ago at this point, um, we saw that a lot of our products, we have 4,000 dental SKUs across laboratory operative preventative spaces, we saw that a lot of our products would be at risk for what was coming down the pipe with digital dentistry from our denture products to our thermoformed uh, uh, laminates, splints, night guards. Um, a lot of that material is going to be put at risk by uh, the advancing um, materials and fabrication of, of digital dentistry. So we saw a need to start to look at what areas can we play in responsibly and where are our competencies and our strength? The other side of Keystone's business, which probably not a lot of people in dental know, but it's a very substantial part of our business, is we are the world's leading supplier of UV curable nail coatings for, um, for uh, manicures for men and women, but primarily women. Um, the two-week gel manicures, they are UV curable photopolymers, and we make more than 2 million pounds a year, and we supply all of the biggest players in the nail industry. So when we started really looking at digital dentistry, we saw that we had 100 years of experience with our dental products and all the expertise we brought to bear on our dental products, mostly in the lab space on this side. But we also had 25 years of being a scaled photopolymer manufacturer and a supplier of biocompatible materials that are going on the body. And I call it our sort of duh moment was to say, hey, we have, um, we have all this experience on the dental side. We have some serious competency in making photopolymers on a scaled basis. 3D printing resins are really just a half step over from the nail gel that we're already making. There's a real opportunity for us to come in here, use our experience on both sides of our business, and to innovate a really um, interesting open source line of materials that are made here in the USA and to position ourselves that way. And here we are three and a half years later with our line of materials that are out and on the marketplace and which we're going to highlight a little bit for you today. So with that background, um, we're going to talk a little bit about our lab resins. These are not medical devices. They're not going in the body, but they are um, all of which being um, significantly used in dental as part of the workflow in the lab. And then um, we'll also talk about our medical device biocompatible resins will feature the first two, and I'll give you a little line of sight on the stuff that's coming down the pike over the next six to eight months on the biocompatible um, front. Uh, we are an open platform approach. Um, we generally think it's better for the consumers. We think it's better for our business, but we think it's ultimately better for the consumers. Uh, closed printing systems, and there are a number of them out there, um, generally end up reducing choice of materials for the end users and you're sort of stuck with supply. If your closed source system supplier doesn't have resin, you're out of luck. Um, if your closed source supplier doesn't have a really innovative um, piece of material that other people have, you're out of luck. So we think uh, the open source platform is the best way to go. We've spent a lot of time, even though it's more difficult to do validations in multiple open source platforms, it's probably the best approach for our company and for long-term for the consumers in this space. So all of our materials are open source. They're designed to work in printers, whether it's 385 or 405 or something in between, as far as wavelength of the light source. Our materials are designed to work in that range for DLP printers. 
Um, one important differentiator for our materials from most of the competitors in the marketplace is we guarantee two years of shelf life. Uh, from what we see, most of our competitors are guaranteeing one. So um, we put in a lot of extra time to select quality raw materials to make sure the end users are not on the clock from the minute they buy the resins. Uh, you have some, an extra year of shelf life with us. All right, so let me briefly go through each of the materials and highlight some of their key performance attributes. Our goal with every material is in some way, shape, or form to make it better than what we saw was already out there. And a good first example of that is our key guide, surgical guide material. Uh, it is incredibly strong. Um, it is, has a flexural strength and a flexural modulus that exceeds almost every other competitor in the marketplace. Um, and that allows it to withstand um, the vibrations and forces that can come with um, implant surgery. So the material is color stable. It is uh, gone through an autoclave uh, sterilization protocol, so our material can be both cold and hot, um, hot sterilized uh, before its usage. Um, it is uh, translucent, so a surgeon will be able to see through the material and get a good line of sight into the areas in which it's performing surgery. Uh, it is a class one biocompatible material, and it is currently available for sale in the US, the EU, and Canada. Um, towards the end of this uh, presentation, I will go through and give you a uh, a little highlight of some of the printers on which we are validated. Uh, I also mentioned at any time you can go to our website, which is at uh, www.keystoneind.com, and you'll be able to get to our dental and our key print page to see the, um, the functionality and the data around each one of these <clears throat> materials. So our, um, our key guide material is priced. Uh, we do a pretty aggressive and regular um, comparative and competitive price survey. We're always keeping an eye on what's happening pricing-wise in the marketplace, and uh, our retail price of just under $300 is pretty consistent with what you'll see in the marketplace for surgical guides. Um, our model material, um, and this is of the materials that is probably, you know, in 3D printing um, rapidly becoming uh, commoditized. I wouldn't call it a commodity yet because none of this stuff is easy, but it's, um, it's something that is less challenging than some of the other materials to make. Ours has some really clear um, performance advantages. It's a very low shrink formula. Um, the mar the, it's colored and its accuracy allows you to have excellent visibility into the margins and for the tooth anatomy when you're doing your restoration planning. Um, it's got a little bit of give to it so you can carve on it without it chipping away, which really is very helpful for restoration planning. And um, we have a gingival mask product that I'll highlight in a minute. Um, that this material also works very well with in terms of restoration planning and getting a lifelike um, assessment of what a patient's implants are going to look like. Uh, we have a uh, model material that is designed to print a little bit faster than the other model material. They're both good model materials. The ortho model is designed to print at a faster speed um, and um, for thermal forming uh, orthodontic devices, uh, the micron accuracy does not have to be as what it has to be for, say, a castable material. So you can print this at 150 or 200 microns without any loss of accuracy of your thermal form device. Um, it can print very quickly. Um, you could probably do models on motion machines within 20 minutes or less with the material, obviously depending on someone on the printer and the capabilities of the printer. But the material is designed for speed for thermal forming. Uh, we have a castable material, which is actually quite nice. Um, we're just about to release a um, key vest material that goes along with this, which is a uh, investment material that has been um, tailored to and paired with this material for optimal performance. Um, other investment materials will work well with it. We can give you some suggestions on that. Some of the more popular ones like MicroStar and uh, a few others work quite well with it, but um, we will also be offering our own um, investment material. Uh, the nice thing about this material is regardless of which um, uh, casting techniques you use, whether you put it in into an oven and gradually ramp, ramp the temperature, or if you put it into an oven that's already sitting there at 900 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to do a rapid burnout, uh, the material is able to handle it. It will not um, have it. The coefficient of thermal expansion for you techies out there is uh, well controlled. Um, the end result is because uh, the heat of the material will not expand. It will not blow up your flask or crack your flask or cause any inaccuracies in your flasking process. 
So uh, it burns out very well. There's no residual ash. Uh, very accurate. Um, very stable. Um, the material has cast well with um, all metals, chrome, uh, chrome, cobalt, gold, and silver um, have worked quite well. Um, we, um, we have on our website um, some literature, both a peer review and a, an instructional um, article about how to best work with the key cast material. And um, uh, you can find that on our website. The, uh, retail price is 325, which again uh, we do a pretty hefty price check on how we're doing pricing-wise in the in the market, and we feel like we're sitting right where most of the castable material is sitting at this point, if not on the low end, to be honest with you. Um, key mask. Um, this is our gingival mask product that you can see here from the photograph. Is how you would um, uh, seat it on your on your model and help uh, see how an implant is going to um, fit and look with natural gum tissue. Um, we offer this in a half kilogram bottle because honestly, um, I can't even imagine how long it would take someone to go through a full bottle printing these tiny little gingival parts. So from our perspective, the last thing we want to do to our consumers is force them to buy a kilogram when the reality is a half kilogram is going to last them a decent amount of time. So again, this is um, Keystone's uh, um, effort to try and be um, user friendly and um, to not um, undertake practices that the end users are going to find annoying, <laughs> to be quite, to be frank about it. Um, the last material I want to um, highlight um, for this is something that um, we just put out into the market for Canada and the EU. We are 510K pending before um, the FDA. And this is probably the material we get asked about the most, and it's definitely the material we're most interested in. It's a one of a kind, extremely unique soft splint material for printing um, flexible yet durable and tough um, night guards and splints. Um, this is not like any other material out there. For those of you who do some 3D printing of splints, I, we know one of the key issues we see regularly with splint material and that we hear regularly from folks like you in the field is material is a little brittle, um, it's breaking, causing issues with the patients. This material is not brittle. It is almost impossible to break. We have many people trying to do it. <laughs> it's very hard to break. It's extremely fracture resistant. It has almost the same level of fracture resistance and notched impact as that keynote disc that we talked about 20 minutes ago. Very hard to break. It is abrasion resistance. Um, it is biocompatible. It is translucent. Um, it was designed to essentially work like a dual hard soft. So it's very durable in the occlusal surfaces but it softens a little bit inside the body at 37 degrees C, and it's very um, good for patient fit and for patient comfort, and ultimately then for patient compliance. Um, the material is patent pending. Um, as I mentioned, it is um, already cleared in Canada and in the EU, and we expect uh, this summer to get our clearance from the FDA. We are extremely excited about this material. There is really nothing else out there like it, and um, the people who are already using it in Canada and in the EU are thrilled about it, and the people who are testing it here in the early phases here in the U.S. have really nothing but very, very positive things to say. So we're looking forward to everybody giving it a shot and uh, seeing the real difference between this and any other um, splint materials out there. And the other thing we can tell you is, because we sell a lot of night guards and splints, thermal form, last year alone, Keystone sold uh, more than 750,000 splints or night guard um, laminate sheets in North America alone. We know this space, and what I can tell you is the efficiency, the accuracy, and the quality of these prints will change the way people want to make night guards and splints. This is going to be really a game-changing way to do it. There's a lot of profit in the product for the labs, um, and it's a really great product for the end users, so we're very excited about this material. Um, very briefly, here's a list of our validated um, uh, printers. Um, this is available on our website. We are updating it regularly. I can tell you um, here we've got eight to ten printers listed here. We probably have another seven in the queue behind this coming in the next six months. We do a lot of work, a lot of vigorous and rigorous validation efforts, particularly for the biocompatible materials for every single one of these printers and for the really key cure boxes. Um, so on this page you can see we also list out here our cure boxes, which materials are validated, um, instructions for time and how to get the best results with these materials. Um, we continue to validate cure boxes. If you're using a cure box that you don't see on this list and you want to ask us about it, 
give us a shout. We're happy to talk to you about your workflow and how to make sure our materials are able to be integrated into your workflow seamlessly. Um, so we, we do um, both printer and, um, and um, cure box validation. We track them regularly. Um, and these two um, resources are on our website at all times and regularly updated. Um, so that is um, just about our 35 to 40 minute mark, which is right about where I was hoping to land. Um, so I thank you guys for your time and attention. Um, I assume that now we're probably going to open it up to some questions that um, if you want to type them into us, we'll be happy to try and field them. And uh, I guess I'll repeat them out loud so that everybody who's online can hear what the question is and what our proposed answers are. So um, fire away. Okay. Um, well, the nice part is I guess I did such a stupendous job explaining everything that you have no questions. Um, we will actually will sit here for a couple minutes. I know that it takes a few people time to type them out and to engage. We'll continue to keep the, the line open for a little bit so that you can ask some questions. Um, as I, I did try to be comprehensive, but maybe I was so comprehensive that I left you without wait, any questions. Ah, here we go. We're getting a couple. All right, so I just had a question pop in asking is form lab is form labs on one of the validated um, charts. So um, we are working on an SLA version. The form labs printer is a laser as opposed to a projector. Um, the key difference between um, an SLA and a DLP technology comes down to sort of speed and accuracy. Um, the laser is tracing every surface of the printed part, so it takes a little bit longer to print. Um, the DLP, you get um, you get a faster print. The accuracy is about the same, um, but um, we have been working on a um, on a Form Labs compatible material that would work in open mode. Um, we are actually doing some testing on it as we speak, and we're hoping at some point in the next three to four months to really have something we put out to the marketplace. Because um, while we think there's some printer technologies that have significant advance advantages over the form labs printer there are a lot of users with those form labs out there and we want to be able to service and support them as well so stay tuned we'll, we are continuing to work on that and we expect to have some news on that probably in q3 um, i have another question here from catch a crawl thank you uh, do you have a recommendation about the transfer from um, analog to digital um, there's some good scan options out there um, um, there are some good boxes. I think that um, it does depend a little bit about how much um, accuracy you want to get and what your price points look like. Uh, three shape is the dominant um, dominant scanner out there, and generally with good reason because um, of its compatibility with other systems in the design phase. Uh, but there are good scanners out there from from Medit and from um, several other manufacturers. Um, we don't generally have a go-to recommendation um, other than to say, um, first of all, Shine, De Shine ca carries definitely a few of them. I know Shine carries the, um, the three-shape um, scanner. Um, if I was getting started on my own at this point, I probably would take a very heavy look at the three-shape scanner, mostly because of its um, history of service and support and the, and the intercompatibility of its software. Um, there are fees and, and license fees that go with it. Um, most of the scanners are generally in a similar price point from $12,000 to $25,000, depending on what it is um, is being brought to the table. So no matter what your lab is doing, it's not a small investment, but it's definitely worth it um, for this, this space. Um, there's a lot of ways you can use that scanner also to both confirm the accuracy um, of your mills and your print jobs by comparing them to original STL. So, uh, we are we are in favor of having a good scanner in your in your shop, and um, I think our best recommendation is <clears throat> to talk to your um, your dealer reps and to make sure you're picking something that, that has good um, interoperability with other systems. Um, have a oh uh, well, I get an email certification. Yes, yeah, so I believe that um, the. Uh, CDT certification, I believe, is being run through Zon. Um, I believe they will be following up with all participants here about certification to make sure that um, you're getting the credit um, that you have uh, 
you've earned by sitting through and listening to me uh, speak to you for 45 minutes. You probably should get double credits for that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, Zahn will be on top of that for you guys. Wrap this up. Okay, good. Um, so as I mentioned, um, first of all, thank you for everybody who's still out there listening. Uh, it was very much appreciated. I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about some of these new products. Um, if you have follow-up questions or you want any additional information, please do not hesitate to either contact us through the web or through our emails. Uh, we're always here to answer questions and to help people um, understand and, and uh, be able to adopt and use some of these products. We are very excited about these. We think that they're going to change uh, your workflow and be very beneficial to your practices and, and hopefully very financially advantageous to your practices as well. Thank you.